My name is Barrett Brown, <clears throat> and I've been waiting for this day for about six months. So, riddle me this, Chief Loaders. How can posting a link leave you facing 105 years in jail? Barrett Brown was a journalist and for a while he was the media's go-to man to speak to about Anonymous. He wasn't a hacker, but he was the founder of Project PM. He's also a former heroin addict and has been called a moral fag and a fame whore. But it's the first four of these things that are important to understanding his current situation. This is Aaron Barr, who was CEO at HB Gary Federal. He claimed that he had tracked down the leadership of Anonymous, as he called it, and would publish their names and bring down the organisation, forgetting that it's not an organisation, but an idea. But here's what actually happened. Anonymous hacked HB Gary and Aaron Barr's Twitter account. They stole tens of thousands of emails and stuck them on a torrent site. In doing so, they destroyed Barr's reputation and he was forced to resign a little while later. Sorry. I've got a case of the giggles. But remember, Barrett Brown isn't a hacker, so how did he end up facing 105 years inside? Well, here's what happened after the HB Gary hack. Most people read through a couple of emails, decided it was mainly tosh and pish, and lost interest. But Brown focused on some dodgy relationships between government agencies like the FBI, the CIA, the NSA, and so on, and private intelligence contractors. He had already set up Project PM, which is an open source investigation project using volunteer investigators to look into the content of these huge information dumps. He and the volunteers went through the HB Gary emails and here's some of the stuff they discovered. Private intelligence contractors were plotting to discredit WikiLeaks and intimidate and attack its supporters, including the Guardian's Glenn Greenwald, who's behind the Edward Snowden whistleblowing story. That was being done on behalf of Bank of America, which was worried that WikiLeaks had information that could bring it down. Then there's Team Themis, a group of private intelligence contractors developing disinformation software that would infiltrate social networks with fake personas and bring organizations down from the inside. These private intelligence contractors were plotting to subvert groups and start feuds, exploit divisions and start disinformation campaigns. It's basically like the private sector's version of the FBI's COINTELPRO. Next up came the Stratfor hack. And for those of you who don't know Stratfor, they're another private intelligence company. One anon in Chicago called Jeremy Hammond took five million documents from Stratfor and stored them on a server provided by a lulsec leader known as Cebu. Barrett Brown then posted the link to Project PM and his team of investigators started looking into the documents. While they were doing so, they uncovered something called Trapwire, which they believed was a major, major find. And three months after the attack, FBI agents led by Agent Robert Smith raided his apartment and his mother's apartment in Dallas, Texas. He wasn't arrested, but his laptop, which they found in his mother's kitchen cupboard, was seized, along with his Xbox and some other equipment. Over the next few months, he was hassled by the FBI as he struggled to go cold turkey on Suboxone, which had helped him kick heroin. In that time, he posted a number of videos, including this one, to do with Agent Smith. Uh, anyway, so that's why uh, Robert Smith's life is over. So when I say his life is over, I don't say I'm going to go kill him. But I'm going to ruin his life and look into his kids because Aaron Barr did the same thing. And he didn't get ready for it. How you like the apples? Now, after that video, he was arrested and charged with threatening a federal agent. Since then, he spent more than a year in prison waiting for his trial. Recently, his legal team was subjected to a gag order, meaning that he can't speak to the press at all. The US government thought he might prejudice his trial if he carried on speaking. But that alone doesn't clear up why he's facing 105 years in jail, especially when you compare that to Jeremy Hammond, the guy behind the Stratfor hack, who was facing 30 but is now only facing 10 after a plea bargain. Well, 
Here's the thing, Stratfor's documents contained credit card information for 5,000 clients. So despite the fact that he had nothing to do with the hack, didn't host the stolen material on any of his own servers, may not even have known that the credit card numbers were in there when he posted the link, he's been charged with intentionally transferring the data with the intention of committing identity and credit card fraud. Those charges relating to the credit card information are the most serious of the ones against him. And that is why Barrett Brown faces 105 years in jail. And if he is found guilty, then linking will be criminalized. And that has massive implication for journalism and for anybody that uses the internet. Oh.